Okay, this video is about restless legs and nocturnal cramps. So nocturnal cramps is something that I had in my legs and my calves by my ankle. And where I got it from is I often do lots of steps. I routinely do about anywhere from 30 to 60 flights of stairs every day, just as part of my job and the way my house is, I'm always having to go upstairs and downstairs from the upstairs to the basement. So I do tons of stairs. And I notice that if I do, you know, 60 or less, it's no big deal. But if I start doing 70, 80, 90, 100, my calves will tighten up. I'll sleep fine until the last couple hours in the morning, then they'll kind of spasm sometimes. And I'm like, what the heck is that? Um, so I decided, what can I do to stop that? First of all, I, I don't necessarily do so many stairs. I work so much. But I noticed a couple other things interesting was that even if I didn't do that many stairs, my, my calves went into spasm one time, and I paid attention to how I sit. And I was I was flexing, like having my feet on my tippy toes, because I get bored. You know, I'm doing a lot of work sometimes sitting at a desk, and I'd be up on my toes for prolonged amounts of time without thinking about it. So I just stopped doing that. Also in the shower, I would I would uh, dorsiflex my foot to rinse my toes off with the water. And I said, you know what? I just don't do that anymore. And then I also started doing something new. I got one of those grounding mats. You plug it into the ground on the circuit. And um, I, um, I don't know if it's BS. I haven't tested it electronically yet, but I know I sleep like a rock. Uh, and I never have any problems with that stuff anymore. I think the main thing is not going over 70 flights of stairs a day because I had Achilles tendonitis when I ran cross country in high school and it's a flare up almost reminds me of that. But uh, not doing that. And I don't know if this grounding's helped, but I sleep like a rock. Good, I like it. So anyways, nocturnal cramps. I spoke to a neurologist because I'm friends with a bunch of neurologists. I talk to them all the time anyways. I said, what do you think of this? you think this is rest of the legs or leg cramps? I didn't actually know the term leg cramps right when I talked. I'm like, well, it could be. So anyways, like the true restless legs is more of a chronic disorder. Um, it's a circadian. It can be when you first go to bed or it can be in the early morning hours. That's when mine was, uh, right before you'd be waking up anyways. Um, occurs, they say, some people say by definition it occurs three times or more um, in the last three months. Uh, different estimates of how many people in the population are 2 to 10%. An irresistible urge to move the legs. Uh, can with associated with discomfort in the legs can wake people up. They get less sleep. That can be bad. It goes away when they stand up and walk. The primary, primary, primary so-called genetic version happens at an earlier age. Secondary one as they get older. Um, nocturnal cramps are said to be something different and mostly associated with muscle fatigue. That's what I think I have. But they also say it's associated with low magnesium. I know my magnesium is pretty good because I'm 100% vegan. I ate lots of plants. Um, other things can be associated with a low serum ferritin. I had previously heard when serum ferritins get below 25, but some authors are saying, oh, keep your serum ferritin 100. That sounds too high for me. I'd probably aim for 50, but if it wasn't working and you had a problem with this, then maybe I'd go, let it go up to 100. Uh, magnesium deficiency too low, alcohol use, B12 deficiency, diabetes increases the risk of restless legs. It could be related to peripheral neuropathy. Some surgeon recommends decompression and nerve tunnels. I don't know. I would do that as a last resort. I wouldn't jump into that. You know, business for him. Uh, peripheral neuropathy, uh, diabetics, they often do better when they when you decrease ischemia to the nerve. Ner neuropathy can be ischemia. It can also be, you know, related to the diabetes because uh, the nerves are constitutive. They just keep on taking up glucose from the blood in proportion to whatever the blood level is. So you go low-fat, low-sodium vegan and you Got a good chance to get that under control if your beta cells are still making uh, insulin. Uh, caffeine can worsen all this stuff. There's no reason to drink caffeine unless you need that to drive and you're sleepy or something, sleep deprived. Kidney failure patients have a lot of this, so don't be in kidney failure. You can usually avoid that. Uh, low fat vegan diet, low protein gives your kidneys a vacation, low sodium. Um, venous insufficiency can do it, venous stasis. It's associated with fibromyalgia, with celiac disease, pregnancy in about 30% of people. Also, it can be a medication side effect. Uh, people taking SSRIs, uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors for uh, depression, have a markedly increased incidence of it. Um, supposedly, it increases uh, serotonin in the spinal sympathetic pathway. Tricyclic antidepressants also to a lesser extent. Uh, antihistamines like diphenhydramine, Benadryl. Uh, treatment medications, it can be treated with gabapentin, some variants on gabapentin. A medicine called ropinirole is the one, the dopamine agonist that uh, my neurology friend recommended. But I would not take a pill unless I absolutely have to. Because if you take a pill, you can get side effects. You can get something called augmentation, where things can get worse after two to ten years. So, I mean, if you have to take a pill, maybe you do. But 
I would always try to make that the last resort. So anyways, I just thought that was a little interesting. Mine totally went away. I only had it a few times. And I think it was just muscle spasm from doing too many stairs. Uh, anyway, so I think I had I had nocturnal uh, calf ankle cramps. I don't think I really had restless legs. Uh, anyways, hope that was helpful.